Okay, hindi naman masyadong malakas yung mic. So now that this lecture is being recorded, we will start. So as you can see, our lecture is entitled Common Mistakes in Writing Task 2. All right, so this is the tips that we'll be giving to you when you will be doing essay writing. So I believe GT students are not going to write an essay, right? Um, you will be writing a letter instead, but for the ACADs, you will be writing an essay. So most of us, especially Filipino students, we dislike essay writing. Every time na any yung type of test that we encounter in school or in any kind of examination, parang <laughs> Right? Because it's writing an essay. So, we don't have a um, prejudice or stereotype na parang pag essay, ang hirap lagi. Like, it's a difficult task. Writing is a difficult task. However, there are also individuals who find writing easier compared to speaking. So, there are people na magaling when it comes to writing but not so good when it comes to speaking. However, in IELTS, you have to holistically practice all those areas, writing, speaking, reading, and listening, okay? So we will be tackling the common mistakes that students would normally encounter in the writing subjects, particularly in the essay, okay? We will also be discussing the types of questions that you will be encountering during the task that in the task that will be given to you during the exam okay so before we start let me give you a little bit of a statistic update According to British Council, the national average band score of test takers in writing in the Philippines is 6.3 for academic and 6 for general training. Okay. Ito daw yung average score na kukuha ng mga test takers. For the academic uh, students, ang passing score niyo po ay 7 or something like that, right? So, ang mga nakakuha lang da, ang pinaka maraming nakakuha is around 6.3. That's such a sad report. Why? Because it means mahirap talaga yung writing subjects. It is really one of the most difficult of those four. At nakakatuwa na yung mga nasa general training Actually, it's also because mas madale yung task na binibigay sa kanila, which is um, the letter writing instead of essay. Okay, so now, even though we have these statistics, don't be discouraged, okay? Because the reason why you are attending these review lectures is for you to be able to find techniques, learn strategies on how you can level up your score or how you can achieve a higher score, okay? Examinees you obtain a score of six in any of the IELTS subtests can be described as a competent user of the English language. However, most test takers aim to get a seven or higher. Why? Sabi dito, okay naman na yung six na score. It means that you are competent in English. It, competent means Kaya mo nang i-express yourself in the English language. You can already converse using the language. However, most participants are aiming for a higher score. Now the question is why? The question is why? Why are we aiming for 7 or a higher score? Simply because the higher your score is, it's also the higher the chance for you to get approved for PR, permanent residency. And although we are um, going to get that instantly, however, 
That's what we want. Because, of course, you have more benefits once you are a resident in that specific country. Okay. It will also give you a higher chance to secure a work visa or university eligibility in English-speaking countries. Fortunately, people who take the test often fail in the writing subject. Wait, I'm going to ask this question. Hello. 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 Yung mga nakaiwan ko na. Mm -hmm. Take note sa mga malapit na mag-exam. Hello, hello. Gininaan ko yung mic kung sila yung mga nag-exam sa kabila. Sabi ni Jay, kahit anong ID po, mayroon mo Kung anong ID yung ginamit mo for registration, yun din yung kailangan mong dalhin. So usually, you can bring your passport or use your passport for registration as well. Bakit? Kinabahan ka ba? <laughs> Bakit naman? <laughs> Actually, I don't know the di the digits. Okay, resume po tayo. And please mute your mi microphones. Okay. Okay, so balik tayo dito sa discussion of it. So it says here that people who take the written test or the writing test, they usually fail sa writing subtest. At di ba nga for IELTS, no matter how high your other subtest score are, hindi niya hahatakin yung score na mababa. That's why you have to make sure that all the four subtests have a passing score. So, very alarming the fact that in the writing subjects, most takers, test takers, fail. Gentlemen, this lesson is actually very important. Alam niyo kung bakit maraming nagpa-fail sa writing subjects? Kasi ang nakasanayan ng mga Filipino, ang nakaugalian na idadala nila sa pag-test. At ano yun? yung hindi pagbabasa ng instruction, yung hindi pag-analyze ng tamang meaning ng tanong. Okay? We will be discussing all these common mistakes that you will be, that most test takers commit. And as Filipinos, we have to change that, that kind of attitude. Okay? Marami tayong, like, for example, instances ang mga Pilipino pa man din kapag tinanong mo iba din yung isasagot for example saan ka na ang isasagot ng Pinoy naliligo na <laughs> um, on the way ka na ba ang isasagot ng Pilipino eto na palis na ng house <laughs> right so we have that kind of attitude wherein we don't listen, and we don't answer accordingly. Alright? So, sa IELTS, hindi po pwedeng ganon. You can't uh, bring that kind of uh, attitude in, when taking the writing subtest. 
Take note in the writing subtest, don't go what I'm gonna feel. So one of the reasons why test takers fail is because of poor question analysis. What does this mean? Poor question analysis. Meaning, in Tagalog, hindi mo naintindihan yung katanungan. Alright? And what happens when you have poor question analysis? Very simple. Maling pagkakaintindi sa tanong, it will result to wrong answers. Ganun lang kasimple. Once kasi nagkamali ka sa pagka-interpret sa question, it automatically means that you will be supplying a wrong answer, either a wrong answer or a non-relevant answer. Okay? All right. So, you must first understand the question to know exactly what the examiner is looking for. One of the biggest mistakes students make is not answering the question properly. If you do not answer the question fully, you can't score higher than a band five. So, it says here, you must first understand the question to know exactly what the examiner is looking for. Yon. You have to understand the question. Okay? And you have to make sure that your isasagut mo is corresponding to the main task that is being asked from you. And one way to do that is to first identify the question type. So, meron tayong iba't-ibang question types. May around four. Four question types, which will be discussed later. So, first, identify the question type. The question types are, um, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Share your opinion. Ganyan yung mga question types. We will discuss them one by one later. Then, identify key words. It's very important that you know how to identify keywords. And finally, identify the instruction words. So in this lecture, we will be tackling the different techniques on how you can identify the keywords and how you can identify the instruction words. Okay. Let's put emphasis on one of the biggest mistakes students make is not answering the question properly. So, maraming, even sa speaking, even sa coaching one-on-one, -on -one, nangyayari din to. It's because hindi mo na organize mabuti yung thoughts ko and ideas. That's why sometimes what happens is, Nasagot mo na, pero na, 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 napaligoy ligoy mo pa. Okay? So, you, you have to know when to stop. Okay? You have to know the parameters, the limit. Okay? Kung relevant pa ba yung mga sinasabi mo or relevant pa ba yung mga sinusulat mo. Kasi baka mamaya, you're giving something that was not asked for. Kasama yan sa poor question analysis. Kung ano lang yung tanong, kung ano lang yung task na hinihingi, yun lang ang kailangan mong isupply. Alright? Huwag kang bidabida. <laughs> That's what it means. Okay? Um, lalo na sa speaking. Pinag-usapan natin yan. Huwag tayong masyadong don't be too OA sa mga, sa mga sagot mo sa speaking. Kasi um, it will eat up time. It can either eat up more time or Minsan, nagiging irrelevant na yung sagot mo, which leads to confusion. Alright? So, pagdating sa writing, ganun din. You have to know your limit. So, you have to be able to be good at analyzing questions. Another common mistake is writing without planning. Okay. So, pag-usapan natin yung mga plano natin sa buhay. <laughs> Alright, so... Writing without planning. 
The students who get the highest marks plan before they write, and they often plan for up to 10 minutes. 10 minutes ba talaga? Wait. The writing subtest is only for 40 minutes. One hour of reading, one hour of listening, one hour of reading, and then 40 minutes sa writing. So do you think na kailangan talaga 10 minutes ang ikonsumo sa preparation or sa planning? Actually, no. Okay? Three minutes is enough. Three minutes is enough. And uh, I believe that the faster you can plan, the faster you can prepare, more time for you to write. Okay? Kaya naman, you can use preparation time and planning time, but make sure na may time ka pa to write. Okay? So, up to maximum na siguro yung 10 minutes for preparation. But why is planning highlighted as one of the common mistakes of writing? I mean, writing without planning. So, kahit sa anong aspeto mo ng buhay, in any aspect in life, if you do not plan, the most, the tendency is you fail. So, sometimes we get lucky but we know that most of the time, it's all about preparation. Preparation is always key, okay? Imagine your instructor coming to class without preparing for the lecture. Obvious yon. <laughs> you people can tell, right? And now, there's a famous quotation, failing to plan is planning to fail. Pinagbalitan ko lang yung words. But it makes sense. Failing to plan. Pag hindi ka nagpa-plano, pinagpa-planuhan mong mag-fail. It's that simple. Okay? So, preparation has saved a lot of tasks and a lot of uh, people from failing. And it will also save you in the writing contest. Planning helps you organize your ideas and structure before you write, saving you time and helping you write a clear essay. Diba dun sa coaching classes natin, there is part two, which is the task cards. And you are given a minute to prepare for an answer. So usually, um, on, the pen, on the paper, you write a little outline of your answers. Like keywords, ganyan. So, pagdating naman dito sa writing, you can also use methods such as prep method. Alam niyo po ba yung prep method? Okay. If you're familiar with the prep method, you can use that. Prep method is um, point, reasons, examples, and point. Maganda siyang structure because it's concise, it's coherent, and it's effective. Okay, so another structure is the sandwich method. Alam niyo po ba sandwich method? Um, it's the intro, body, and conclusion. All right, so your intro, is, imagine it like the bun. You, alam niyo sa young burger. Uh, imagine a young burger, okay? So the, the first bun is the intro, and then... The body can be composed of three paragraphs. So we have like cheese and then the, the patty and then sometimes you have tomatoes or lettuce or cheese or, or the dressing, something like that. But you know, you know, you know, body. Actually, show you the important part in body because that's where the fun part is. And then the last part is the conclusion, which is yung isa pang layer ng bun. So that's what you call the sandwich method. All right? Pero bakit di tinawag niya yung burger method? Hindi ko rin alam. <laughs> okay. So anyway, we all know Jollibee yung burger is so good. <laughs> so yun, yung sandwich method na yun, it will really help you organize your thoughts. So mamaya, we will also discuss how to write an effective introduction. Pero actually, di ba sabi ko kanina, 
the body part is the most important part of your essay. Pero sa totoo lang, all those three main parts are important. Because without one, it wouldn't be complete. Right? So yeah. One way for you to plan is to know different methods on how to write an outline. Okay? So writing an outline is very simple. Um, ganito. So sa introduction, usually, dun nakalagay yung pinaka point mo, like yung PC statement mo in an essay. So dun mo sasabihin yun, ano lang ba yung scope ng discussion. Alright? And then, in your body, there are three paragraphs, like paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. Each paragraph should have a topic sentence. And on your conclusion, that's one of the hardest part because actually, you know, underestimate not in a conclusion. We, we think that it's not so important, but it's actually it, it actually is because it's just it summarizes the whole essay, all right? So, ayun. Mas organized na yung thoughts mo since pero kang nilagay na topic sentence 1, topic sentence 2, and 3. Alam mo na hanggang, kung hanggang saan lang yung pag-isulat mo. Alright? Hindi ka na para magpaligoy-ligoy sa iba pang topics. Okay? Let's say for example, yung topic mo is... Um, ito yung essay na pinasulat ko sa student ko. So he's a nine-year-old boy. So nag-writing classes na siya agad. Nine years old pa lang siya. And then medyo intensive yung writing classes namin kasi yun talaga yung in-enroll niya. So sa writing class namin, ang topic niya is um, my favorite sport. My favorite sport. And then ang PC statement niya is Reasons why I love table tennis. So you know your favorite sport, yeah, table tennis. So I told him, please come up with three reasons. That no reasons now. Why do you love table tennis? So sa bawat that no reasons na yon, meron na siyang topic sentence. Okay, so yung introduction niya, yung introduce niya, what is table tennis? Why he kind, why he like, sa introduction, dun niya sinabi na table tennis is his favorite sport. And there are few reasons why he loves table tennis. So, sa topic sentence niya, reason number one why he loves table tennis is because table tennis is helping him become physically active. Alright? It's a good exercise. Having a better. So, topic sentence one, table tennis is a good exercise. And then topic sentence two, table tennis. Another reason why I love table tennis is because table tennis is a fun sport. And topic sentence three, the third reason why he loves table tennis is because he, he can play table tennis with his dad. They can spend quality time together. So that's the reason I am. Okay? Hang on. Sabi ko sa kanya, alright, it's time for you to substantiate your essay. Anong ilalagay niya doon? Sa topic sentence 1, ilalagay niya yung mas-research niya or may iisip niyang reasons why table tennis is good for your health. It's a good exercise. So, ang na-research niya, table tennis helps the arm muscles. It also is a good cardio. And sabi niya, table tennis, ang outcome ng research niya, table tennis is also helpful sa brain. Kasi, mabilis ka dapat mag-isip and technique ka na. So, and also, another reason is, when we do physical activities such as sports, we release happy hormones such as endorphins. So, ayun. A substantiate niya yung first paragraph niya with limited information na relevant lang sa topic sentence 1 niya. So, ganun po ka importante ang planning. Do you get my point? Do you get the whole concept of what I'm talking about? So, sa topic 2, topic sentence 2 niya, which is 
My second reason why I love table tennis is because it's a fun sport. It explained that Don na he plays it with his friends. He gave reasons. He gave examples. Pero hindi siya lumabas sa limit. Kasi nakafocus lang siya sa pinaka topic sentence two. Kasi topic sentence three nagfocus naman yung sa quality time with his dad. He explained there that he only gets kasi doctor tatay niya. Neurologist ang tatay ng school ko. Sa brain. So, ngayon, hindi man ko siyang maging student nga pala. Student ko yung kuya niya. So, kita ninyo. Ay, nakapasa na si talaga yung gene siya, no? Ay, neuro neurologist yung tatay. So, ngayon, sabi niya, my dad would actually doesn't have time. Kasi nga, laging busy, doktor, ganyan. But, on weekends, he gives me time. Kaya sobra daw na-appreciate niya yung bonding nila sa table tennis. So doon, doon lang siya nag-focus sa topic sentence screen niya. Wherein they discuss, he discussed in that part na sobra na-appreciate niya yung dad niya, yung quality time nila together. That he, his dad also gets to exercise with him because they play table tennis together. And explain niya doon na um, even though busy yung dad niya, he still finds time for him. Ganyan. So ayun, doon lang nag-focus. Hindi, na nag, hindi na siya nalito kung ano pa ba yung gusto niyang ilagay doon sa topic sense 3 para masubstantiate yon Kasi meron na siyang reasons and examples. So ayun. So structure and outline is so important. That's why you need to know how to plan. Ngayon, nasabihin niyo, ma'am, 40 minutes na yung writing test. 3 minutes is enough for you to write an outline. Kailangan mabilis po tayo mag-isip. Alright? It's under pressure, may time limit. So you have to make sure na kung ano yung unang kumasok sa isip mo, yun na yung sulat mo. And then, of course, i-evaluate mo rin naman if tama ba yung points na nilalagay mo. Alright? Now, sa prep method, mas madali ang prep method for me. Because, halimbawa, the task is asking you to agree or disagree. Now, you're going to choose between the two, if you agree or disagree. So, in the prep method, you just give your point, I agree, yada, yada, yada. Reasons why you agree, E, examples. Magbigay ka na examples. What are the kind of examples that you could give? Practical examples. Experiences mo. Yung mga experiences mo mismo, yun yung mga examples na pwede mong ibigay. Alright? And then, to wrap it up, Restate, reiterate your point, and of course, summarize it. Okay? So, ganun. Ganun yung mga techniques ninyo sa planning. Let's talk about misunderstanding the instruction portion of the essay question. Ito po tayo, ito po tayo, Nakakaranas ng maraming relasyon na natapos. Misunderstanding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ayan. So sa mga pupunta po ng abroad, alam niyo na, LDR. <laughs> De joke lang. Well, hindi ko naman kayo din discourage but reality check, right? Real talk lang. So, misunderstanding the... Misunderstanding the instruction portion of the essay question. We all know that misunderstanding can lead to a lot of conflict. So yes, it is a common mistake that most test takers commit. All IELTS essay questions include a sentence that tells the student precisely what they are expected to do in the written response. So take note of this. Anong nangyayari sa laptop ko? It's not clickable. Ay, hindi pa na siya, siya naka-charge. Wait lang, mukhang matay pa. Wait lang, guys, ha? But I can't seem to use my pen. Oh, here. Suddenly it worked. So it says here. The essay questions include a sentence, a sentence that tells exactly, precisely what they are expected to do. So, 
that's why it's very important for you to identify key words. Okay? Typically, this sentence will include words like discuss, analyze, argue, support, or refute. And the student is expected to respond accordingly. Big emphasis on the word accordingly. Okay? Which simply means you have to be able to answer exactly what the task is asking you for. Okay? So misunderstanding the question can lead to a lot of problems. That's why, basahin po natin mabuti yung instructions. You need to be able to read the questions properly and make sure na na-understand mo siya properly. And, um, eto, wait lang. May example tayo dito. So, eto, eto yung usually mga higita nyo. Discuss both sides of this argument. What is your opinion on the object, on the subject? Discuss both views and give your opinion. Yan yung mga usual na instruction sentences that you will be encountering. That's why you have to be able to supply whatever is asked from you. Okay? Okay, so let's read the example. The internet is replacing many traditional forms of communication. This brings with it more negative than positive ramifications for humanity. Discuss this and state your opinion. So, again, one way for you to know what is the question is to remember these keywords. Discuss, analyze, argue, support, refute. So, ito, ito. It has the word discuss. Meaning, this is the requirement for you. Discuss this and state your opinion. Okay. The instruction sentence is directly telling the students how they are expected to formulate a response. The problem many students run into is that, that they misinterpret what is in, what this instruction sentence is really asking them, and this in turn causes the overall relevance of their essay response to suffer. If you have found this is a problem for you, let's go over a few sample instruction sentences. Okay, so again. Um, the internet is replacing many traditional forms of communication. This brings with it more negative than positive ramifications for humanity. So ngayon, discuss mo daw yung topic, which is the internet is replacing many traditional forms of communication. And then, ibibigay mo yung opinion mo after discussing the topic. Okay, so here are some samples. Many young people today are using not only. Bakit hindi? <laughs> hindi pala to. Wait lang, guys. Okay. Ito pala yung mga sample ng mga tanong, okay? Many young people today are using not only the legal but also the illegal drugs. Discuss the causes of this disturbing trend. And enumerate, oh, ito, keyword ulit to, the effects before suggesting your solution. Tatlo yung tasks na hinihingi dito sa question na to. Okay? Discuss the causes, enumerate the effects, and then suggest a solution. So meaning, you have to be able to substantiate your answer with all these three, okay? Ano daw yung mga causes ng illegal drug consumption? Ano daw yung mga effects? And then, what are the solutions that you could suggest? Another example. 
Sending criminals to prison is not an effective way to deal with them. Giving them education and proper training is the better option. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Oh, ayan. Agree or disagree. Pero, ginamitan niya ng to what extent. Alright. Pero ang pinaka boiling point niyan is do you agree? Or disagree. So it asks, it is requiring you to give an answer. Okay? So, these are the type of questions that you will be encountering. First one is discuss both sides of this argument. Meaning, you will be discussing the negative and the positive. Phrases like this ask students to analyze the opinions of others. Thus, students would be best to follow a discussion essay format and analyze the merits or lack thereof of the topic or position presented in their essay question. So, um, when you discuss both sides of the argument, it means you will, you will discuss two opinions, okay? Now, what is your opinion on the subject? This time, the man is just asking for your opinion. And discuss both views and give your opinion. Now, the last, this third one is asking you to do this and provide an opinion. Okay? So, sa example na to, sending criminals to prison is not an effective way to deal with them. If it asks you to discuss both, um, you can talk about criminals should be imprisoned. Discuss mo yung benefits on, And then you can also discuss the yung pinaka opposing statement niya, which is giving them education and proper training is the better option. So, inihingi dito na dalawang side ang kailangan mo it discuss, all right? So, which is, the first one is sending criminals to prison. So, ano ba yung opinion mo about that? And then, ano naman yung mga um, effects kapag ka you give them education and proper training instead of imprisoning them? So, you will be discussing those two. And then, if it asks you to give your opinion, pipili ka ngayon. Kung if you think prisoners should be in prison, or if you think that they should receive proper training and education instead. Okay? That gets you po ba? So, um, you have to be careful in what type of questions are being asked in each question. And then, ito, do you agree or disagree? Share personal examples to support your response. This question instructs the student to include examples from their life while arguing one side of a particular position. Thus, responding in an argument-styled essay would be best. Okay. Um, this is also one thing that I would usually recommend to those students na na have a coaching now with me. Kinatanong kasi nila ko, like, should I answer agree or disagree? Should I answer them both? Or should I just pick one? Kasi, nalilito na sila. Like, for example, um, sinabihan ko yung isang student na, if the question is requiring you to agree or disagree, you have to really choose one. One side only. Why? Because you're gonna get confused. Ikaw mismo, you're creating a trap for yourself. Because you are stating points why you agree, and then you're stating points why you disagree. But then it doesn't really um, give a more strong answer. Kanaman, if the question is asking you to agree or disagree, do you agree or disagree? You just choose one, okay? And then substantiate mo na yung sagot mo with examples, okay? You can give reasons and examples kagaya ng prep method. You give your point if you agree or disagree. You give reasons, you give examples, and then you re reiterate or restate your point. Okay? 
So, ayan yung mga type of of questions na hihingin sa mga sa essay writing. So, ngayon, malinaw po ba lahat to? Like, discuss all these? Malinaw? All right. So, kaya din naman may mga ganyang questions is that for you to be able to know hanggang saan ka lang magdi-discuss. Okay? And always remember, if you did not analyze the question properly, it can lead to mistakes. Kaya naman, you have to pay attention to the question type in order for you to supply the correct answer. Now, let's talk about writing an introduction. Okay. Writing an intro that does not respond directly to the essay question. Why are introductions so important? Well, sa introduction po, dun yung po sasabihin, you will be in the writing component, in an essay, the introduction is your make or break part. Okay? If your introduction doesn't support the main point of your discussion, automatically, you will get point deduction, okay? In the event you are given an IELTS question that requires a response written in the argument essay style, it is imperative you compose a clear and relevant introduction. Clear and relevant introduction. So usually in an essay, dun nakalagay yung thesis statement ng isang essay, okay? Meaning, yun lang yung scope ng discussion, Yun, dun lang tatakbo yung pinaka discussion sa essay. Nothing ruins an argument essay faster than a, problema, than a problematic introduction. So, you have to make sure that your introduction is always clear and relevant to your topic. Okay. Okay lang daw ba if you repeat words? Is it okay if you repeat words? So, it says here, yes. It is okay to repeat words, but the, su the suggestion is, the recommendation is paraphrase. So, alam, marunong po ba tayong lahat ng paraphrase? Paraphrasing is restating the sentence, but in a different structure and using different words, okay? Okay. <clears throat> The only important thing that you have to remember when you are paraphrasing, yung keywords and phrases ng isang question ay kasali pa rin, okay? Repeating words from your question will help ensure your examiner sees a direct link between it and your essay. Thus, an essay question that reads, do you agree or disagree that students should be required to study a language in high school? I agree that students should be required to study a language in high school. So as you can see, ni repeat lang yung question. So ito, effective na tong introduction na to. And you're making it clear that you agree. Kasi nga, ang task na hinihi, ang tinatanong dito yung this is the type of question. Do you agree or disagree? So, in the beginning of your essay, you have to make sure that you you make it clear whether you agree or disagree. Okay? Make it clear and uh, relevant to the question asked. Okay. These are some examples. Globalization has offered numerous possibilities towards communicating with others. Considering the many benefits of technology, snail mail can be lost in the future. This is a sample response. The worldwide innovation has positively affected the mode of communication of people nowadays. However, my belief is firm that the conventional way of sending out messages should not die out. Okay. As you can see, most of the words na ginamit dito sa response na to is just paraphrased from the task description. Right? So sabi dito, globalization has offered numerous possibilities towards communication. Ang 
Kaparalel nito is the worldwide innovation has positively affected the mode of communication. It has the exact same meaning, but it has been paraphrased. Okay? Considering the many benefits of technology, snail mail can be lost in the future. However, my belief is firm that the conventional way of sending out messages should not die out. So ito, in-state niya dito yung opinion niya about it. Pero nag-die out na talaga siya eh. Di ba? The conventional way of sending out messages like snail mail. Are we still using that nowadays? So lahat tayo, email na and messenger apps. Okay. Worldwide innovation, globalization. See? So that's how you paraphrase. You don't entirely change. You can change the words, but you have to make sure that you don't entirely change the parallel meaning of the words. Okay. Another common mistake. Another common mistake in writing is trying too hard. What does it mean? Alam niyo ba yung mga gumagamit ng super hirap na words? Okay? So that's actually what it, it basically means when you are trying too hard. You're using very difficult words to express your thoughts. So minsan, um, it can cause a lot of uh, mistakes as well. Kasi baka mamaya, you're not sure of how to use that word and then you misused it in a sentence. So it can lead to miscommunication, misunderstanding. Okay, some people think that intelligence is innate while others think that we can improve our intelligence through learning. Discuss both views and give your opinion. So this is the task. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Meaning you have to discuss both. Some people think that intelligence is innate. So give reasons why some people think that intelligence is innate. And then you also have to give reasons why some people think that we can improve our intelligence through learning. So if you discuss small your reasons why why people are considered intellectual. Parang innate daw ba yon or natural ba yon? Were they born with it, that kind of intelligence? Or ang intelligence daw ba is just a skill that you develop through childhood, from childhood through adulthood? So dalawang contrasting ideas go. So make sure you follow the instruction, which is discuss both views, and then give your opinion. So, after discussing both views, pili ka na lang ng opinion mo. Okay? Whether you think intelligence is natural, or whether you think that it's a skill that is developed. So, ano ba para sa inyo yung sagutang sagot? Is it really natural? Is it really from the genes? Or is it a skill? that we develop. What is your opinion about that? Huh? Na de develop. Kayo po. Sa genes. Sa mga nurses dito, what is the scientific basis of this? Yeah? I'm just having no case. I'm not going to say that. So, my cases kasi na kaya nilang i-justify both views. Like, like, kapag binigay mo yung opinion mo, pwede mo rin namang both views. Pero, you have to make sure that you use the right words. Para sa akin, mas safe if pili ka ng isa. At least, hindi mo na pahirapan yung sarili mo mag-isip pa, right? Because it's just asking to give you your opinion. Meaning, 
walang maling sagot. Either you choose both or your opinion, eh, isa lang, it's just right. Kasi opinion yun eh, it's not a fact, okay? So, in discussing views, you also have to supply facts, okay? Kung kaya mo naman mag-supply ng facts, then yeah, you should. Now, in giving your opinion, you can pick either or you can discuss both. Kasi sa mga examples na mababasa natin dito, pareho, parang parehong nag, nag-a-agree siya sa parehong ano, um, statements. Let's read the example. The ultimate capacity of the mind has been an enigma since the primor... Ayan. <laughs> Di ba ang hirap na mga words? Primordial existence of man. In light of this is a split in the voice of the people juxtaposes the proverbial nature versus nurture, nurture debate. This essay with an attempt to scrutinize both paradigms concurs that sincere intellect is limitless. It can be harnessed at will through different faculties of learning. So this is an example of trying to harm. Wait a So, ayan. Yun yung mga words na high pollutant words. eto Okay. Writing one sentence introduction. So, the so introduction you have to include two sentences at least, all right? Two sentences. Example. It is inevitable that traditional cultures will be lost as technology develops. Technology and traditional cultures are incompatible. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this view? Ang introduction, sample, in, sample introduction na pwede mong gawin is, some people believe that technological developments lead to the loss of traditional cultures and I partly agree with this assertion. So, ang ginawa niya dito is pinaraphrase niya yung task question and then clarify niya whether agree or disagree okay so that's the important components of your introduction paraphrasing the task question and stating a clear point if you agree or disagree with the given example okay some people believe that technological development leads to loss of traditional cultures. Okay. Pero sabi niya then, I partly agree. Okay. Model introduction. Some people believe that technological developments lead to the loss of traditional cultures. I am generally in favor with this assertion. While it may be true in the case of some societies, Others seem to be unaffected by technology and the modern world. So, it is stated that the, the answer agrees that technological developments lead to loss of traditional cultures. However, sinabi din niya yung isa pang view, which is, it may be true in the case of some society. But others seem to be unaffected by technology and the modern world. Okay. So, this is a good introduction. Why? Because it paraphrases the, the given question. Plus, you are restating your opinion on it. Kung agree ka ba or hindi. Okay? Okay, let's read the task description. It is inevitable that traditional cultures will be lost as technology develops. Technology and traditional cultures are incompatible. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this view? So it's asking again if you agree or disagree. Some people believe that technological... Ito yung example na hinihingi mo. Because 
Um, diba? Tinanong mo if whether you can answer, agree or disagree. So, this is an example wherein nag-agree siya, pero nagbigay din siya ng isa pang statement to um to point out yung isa pang wait, so, let's read. It is inevitable that traditional cultures will be lost as technology develops. Agree ka ba or disagree that because of technology, nawawala na raw ang traditional cultures. So, ang sagot niya dito, I am generally in favor with this assertion. While it may be true in the case of some societies, others seem to be unaffected. So, nag agree siya na some cultures, traditional cultures are gone. But, at the same time, meron din daw siyang na-experience wherein some people are unaffected by technology. Which is true. Because, um, hindi naman lahat, hindi naman, it depends on the generation. Okay? So, us, the younger generation, we are affected by the, the changes of that, uh, the, the changes because of technological development. Affected na yung lahat. We, we can easily adapt to it. But there are people na, for example, yung mga magsasaka or mga nakadira sa mga liblib ng mga kabahayan, they are not really affected by that. Okay? And they still keep the traditional practices. Okay? So, sa example na introduction na to, si sabi niya, in favor siya. So, sinabi niya that she or he agree. However, nakikita rin niya na may mga tao hindi rin naman apektuhan ng technology. Alright? Which is true din naman. It is true na may mga tao din naman hindi affected ng technology and modern world. Yun yung mga tinatawag nating mga uh, siguro depende rin sa society na kinalakhan ng bawat tao and it also depends on the privileges the location, the privileges, and other factors that affect a person's um, acquisition of technological developments. Okay. Another common mistake in writing is unclear trend and unrelated ideas. So it's very important that you make sure that everything that is written is relevant to the task, okay? You need to show your own opinion with a clear thesis statement in the beginning and support that opinion with related topic sentences in each paragraph. Some students will give neutral opinions and unrelated points that will greatly affect the writing score because it lacks coherence and logic. So this is what I was discussing earlier that you should be able to come up with a topic sentence per paragraph. And then you have to be able to discuss only what's relevant. Okay, I'm going to show you another slide. Okay, now. I will just stop sharing my screen. And I'll show you another document. Okay. Ayan. And we have essay. Wait lang, guys. Pangbata, kasi bata mga tinuturuan mo. <laughs> Okay. Ito. So this is what we were talking about earlier. So we have this 
Ay, hindi pala nakikita ng mga nasa Zoom. Wait. <laughs> Zoom participants, I forgot about you. Okay. So, para maiwasan yung pag-include ng irrelevant ideas and thoughts, you have to make sure that you have a clear outline. So, you have to have the introduction, body, and conclusion. So, these are the three main parts of your essay. Okay? So, introduction. Ang introdu so, yung example na nabasa natin kanina was about technological developments, right? That's an example. So now you're, it's asking you to, do, do you agree or disagree that technological developments affect traditional cultures? So make sure that in your introduction, you paraphrase mo yung statement and then clarify, clarify mo if you agree or disagree So introduction, so introduction mo yung ilalagay. Then make at least three points. I agree because first point. I agree because second point. And I agree because third point. Para nakalimit lang yung ideas na isunod mo. Alright? So let's say, bakit ka nag agree that technological developments affect traditional cultures? Well, point number one could be uh, when it comes to communication. Let's say, Sa point one, gusto mong i-reiterate na communication is one of the reasons why I agree that technological developments affect traditional cultures. Kasi, in communication, um, hindi na kagaya ng dati na mabagan. Now, everything is so fast, right? Easy, accessible through the internet. Communication. Point one mo, pwede mo topic is communication. Point two mo, ang pwede mong i-topic is, mag-isip nga kayo. <laughs> okay, so ang point two mo, pwede mong i-topic is transportation. Kasi technological development din ang transportation, right? And then sa point three mo, pwede mong i-topic is education. Hindi mo naman kailangan mag-go into details like, um, According to them, and being, hindi naman ganon. Like, magbigay ka na ng general facts. Or you can even give examples. Alright? You can give, sabi nga kanina, one of the common mistakes is trying too hard. So, hindi ka naman gegrade ng kung gano'n ka katalino dito eh. Gegrade ka kung gano'n mo na justify, naging coherent yung ideas mo per paragraph. Alright? So, and then, sa conclusion, sa conclusion, dun mo ilalagay, i-reiterate mo yung three points mo of discussion, and then summarize. So, sa mga teachers, alam mo na kung paano gawa ng mga essay-essay, right? <laughs> yeah. Kasi, essay writing sa ACAD, eh, di ba? So, essay writing sa ACAD, you have to come, may, alam ko may lim Ilang words ba ang required sa akad? Ha? 250 words? Kunti lang pala rin. Kung pinapasulat po sa student ko, 500 words. 9 years old yun. <laughs> o, lang kaya naglamo kayo, ha? Ang body. Oo. Kasi pa pag ang alam, ang kasigat ang alam ko, yung body, isang paragraph, yung production, isang paragraph, yung isang paragraph. Depende sa'yo yun kung anong ilang, ilang points gusto mong i- discuss. Ngayon, kung trip mo naman na three points, kung marami kang ideas, mag-ibig sabihin, halimbawa, education, transport, ibig sabihin, iibig ba kayo ng para? Oo, oh, oh. para, kasi, the reason why paragraphs exist is for you to be able to limit your thoughts. Kasi ang paragraph, it separates the ideas. Okay? So, kung isa lang naman yung point mo, like, isa lang naman yung gusto mong i-defend i- i- na point, okay lang din naman na isang paragraph. Pero, ang pinaka-recommended uh, is three points. Up to a- at least three points na sa bawat essay. Okay? So, kung 250 words lang yun, konting sentences lang, bawat point. It's not difficult. It's actually, it's 
possible. It's pro it's ayan ganyan siya. So para maiwasan natin na hindi na relevant ang mga sinasabi natin, make sure that you are capable of separating the topic set, the paragraphs, making paragraphs, okay? Hindi ko na alam paano ibalik. <laughs> Bakit ba ang hira? Mm. What do I click? Display settings? Or wait now. Ayan. So, sabi, pangi take note, some students will give neutral opinions and unrelated points that will great that will greatly affect the writing score because it lacks coherence and logic. So, ayan, kasagutan sa mga tanong mo kanina, neutral opinions will lead to lack of coherence and logic. Ang alam mo sa sabihin niya, minsan kasi kami mga babae, marami na rin gusto ipaglaban. I want to explain the other side. Pero mas maganda din, nakapokus ka lang sa isa. Kasi it will maximize your your thoughts. Uh -uh. Kasi dito, pag neutral yung opinions na ina-express mo, it will actually confuse you as well. Parang ano ba talaga pinaniniwalaan ko? Ganon. Right? So you have, dito, kailangan sa writing, meron ka pa yung imbigan. Okay? Okay, so... Oh, sige. Sabi din dito, show your own opinion with a clear thesis statement. Dapat pala pinresent ko na yung buong essay presentation ko for all my, for my kids eh. For my kids. Okay. Sige na nga. Okay, class. Are you ready? <laughs> Ang cute pa naman nilagay kong graphics, graphics. <laughs> Ayan. Table of contents. Definition of essay. Benefits of essay writing. <laughs> Parts of an essay. Medyo ka. Skip na natin yan. So, gusto ko lang i-discuss itong thesis statement. Introduction, body, conclusion. Introduction. The purpose of your introduction in writing is to grab the interest of your readers. Bring in the general topic, state the thesis statement or specific point of the essay. You know thesis statement, okay? So sa introduction nyo, you have to make clear what your thesis statement is kasi yun yung pinakamagiging scope ng discussion mo, okay? So sa body, you can provide evidence Concrete examples of the evidence and tell why the evidence is important. And so conclusion, reconnect to the introduction, summarize the evidence, leave memorable message for the reader. Okay, so yun lang. And then an example essay that I want to show you. Kanino ng essay pipiliin ko? Am siguro kay ano na lang. Hey, Ryan. So, ito. Um, draft pa lang itong ginawa namin ng essay. Kasi para mas madali niyang maintindihan yung parts. So, yung essay, yung title ng essay niya is My Favorite Hobby. As you can see. Essay niya is My Favorite Hobby. Huwag nyo nang pansinin yan kasi wala lang yan. 
So, sa introduction niya, I made sure na nilagay niya doon yung topics and yung thesis statement niya, which is reasons why I love table tennis. Okay? Na ibig sabihin, yun lang yung magiging scope ng discussion. Yung three reasons why you love table tennis. So, as you can see, sa topic sentence one niya, ayan yung mga reasons niya, evidence niya, that table tennis is good for one's health. Tapos, sinabi niya dito, it's good for your thighs because playing table tennis makes your thigh muscles stronger. Pero syempre, hindi niya lang yan inibento, ah. Sinerge niya yan. Pero kung nasa exam ka at hindi ka naman pwedeng mag-search, make sure na ang ipoprovide mong topic sentence number one, kaya mong i-defend. You can supply it and sustain it with correct answers. Para lang yung ideas mo, hindi siya paligoy-ligoy. Okay? So, pero hindi ka magsusulat ng topic sentence too, tas ganyan. Example lang yan para lang maging clear sa kanya kung paano. Okay? So anyways, balik na tayo dito. Where is it? Hmm. Okay, if you share it now, let me. Hey. Okay, let's see an example. Most people have forgotten the meaning behind traditional or religious festivals during festival periods. People nowadays only want to enjoy themselves. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this opinion? So, at the young sample response. Some argue that we no longer remember festivals and that most of us just have fun. So, as you have no as you can notice. Paraphrase ulit. Paraphrasing is highly encouraged. Okay? Hindi na, para hindi mo kokopyahin yung exact na sinulat. Okay? Um, hindi rin kasi maganda na kinopya mo lang din kung ano yung sinulat. So, that's why paraphrasing is highly encouraged. I agree. O, oh, ayan. It's very clear na I agree that enjoyment seems to be priority during festival times and that people have forgotten what these festivals mean. Ngayon naman, if you disagree, make sure that you also provide clear reasons why you disagree. Okay? Pero ayan na nga. Ito yung sample introduction. Meaning, after paraphrasing, what you can do is you can make it clear if you agree or disagree. Some people argue that the original meaning of festivals is forgotten. And that most individuals treat them as opportunities to have fun. While I find myself in accord with the idea that enjoyment is a priority during festivals. I do not believe that people have forgotten what these festivals mean. So, sinabi niya dito na disagree siya. Okay? Because sinabi niya, I do not believe. Well, it basically means I disagree, right? Hindi mo naman din kailangan always sabihin I disagree. You can say I don't think so. I do not believe, okay? Those are other ways for you to express that you disagree. 
Okay. So, na, na, isu, na include ba dito sa response na to ang introduction with this statement? Yes. Because, sinabi niya dito that I do not believe that people have forgotten what these festivals mean. Meaning, meaning clear niya yung stand niya that they do, he or she does not believe or does not agree. Okay? And also, was able to paraphrase the task question. Okay. Another common mistake in writing is the wrong use of transition words. But first of all, what are transition words? Okay. Transition words are very important. Why? It's because it makes the discussion smooth. Okay? You transition. It means you transition from one topic to another. But you have to make it to the point that smooth your transition. Well, that's why transition words are important. Okay? So when you are in a TV program, yung mga hosts, like from one segment to another, may mga nag-host. Like, okay, let's move on. Parang nasabihin nila na ito na yung next performance. Watch out for this. This is a performance from Yolo Pascual or something like that. Like that transition, transition sila. So in essay writing and even in speaking and when you're making a speech and when you write an essay, it is very important that you transition. Na meron di, it, it, it will also signal that you will move on to another discussion. Okay? So transition words are used to connect your ideas in a logical way. Wrong use of transition words can influence the logic of your ideas. So one way for you to have a more coherent essay, you have to make sure that you use proper transition words. List of some common transitional devices to add. If you want to add to like an additional reason or additional example, you can use and, again, and then, besides, equally important, nor, to, next, lastly. Okay? You can also use further, furthermore, in addition to that, moreover, in addition, additionally. For example, the topic is about, um, what topic can I think of? Let's say heavy traffic. Let's talk about heavy traffic. Um, state, do you agree that, do you agree that Metro Manila is one of the highly congested, has one, has one of the most highly congested roads in the world? Do you agree? So, ngayon, if you say that you agree, you say the reasons why you agree. Okay, so let's say one of the... Evidences that you can state is that the reason why LRTs and MRTs are jam-packed every rush hour is because roads are, are highly congested. Tra the traffic is really heavy because of buses and commuters and um, even buses, yeah, private vehicles. They congest the roads, which leads to jump pack LRT and MRT. In addition, magbibigay ko ulit ng isa pang reason kung why you agree that Metro Manila is one of the highly congested roads in the world. Um, in addition to that, Manila is also known as an overpopulated city. So bukod sa sabay-sabay sa rush hour, Isa pa sa reason kung bakit highly congested ang aling mga roads is because of overpopulation sa Metro Manila. So, ayun. That's why it's important for you to use transition words in an essay. Is it clear? Okay. Hala, hindi pa na ako napagbigay ng break time. Okay. Tapusin ko lang yung transitions and then I'll give a break time. So to compare, if you want to compare some things in the discussion, you use these transition words. 
Whereas, but yet compared to up against, balance against. But although conversely, after all, in contrast, other hand, however, nevertheless, and the list goes on. Starting the sentence or paragraph with contrast, although this may be true. Although this may be true. And then to prove. Don't worry, you don't need to take photos and screenshots. My handout naman kung isa-send sa Facebook. Ipopost dun sa uh, group chat, okay? So these are the transition words you use to prove, to show exception, to show time, to repeat. Pinaka-common na ginagamit is because, of course. Obviously, evidently, furthermore, okay. All these transition words, you could use them in your essay writing. And if you have noticed, most of these transition words are also present in the discussion that we had last Thursday about adverbs. Like immediately, obviously, evidently, right? To emphasize, to show sequence. Do not use first, second, third. Sobrang elementary yan. <laughs> so it's not recommended. It's highly discouraged to use first, second, third, and so forth. So kaya naman, pwede mong gamitin yung next, then following this, simultaneously, concurrently, therefore, hence, next. To show sequence, kapag ka meron kang gustong i-order in chronological order, you can use these transitions. Okay? To give examples, to summarize or conclude. Yes? Well, it's not highly recommended. And I feel like parang mas ginagamit siya sa ano eh. Um, uh oh. Kasi di ba pag writing medyo formal? Kung hindi siya masyadong considered as formal. Okay. So, you can come back in 10 minutes after the break, okay? Or if you don't want to leave, it's okay. <laughs> okay, let's have a 10 minute break.
ay sorry sa mga naka-mute. Hindi ko sinasadyang mag-mute kasi tumawag si Kevin dun sa messenger, nag-automatic mute dito sa Zoom. Pero anyway, kaka-start lang naman. So, eto. So, let's clean this up. As you can see, these words, the connectors or the transitions that were used can be minimized. All right? And some phrases are already omitted. In a mid, um, a lot of individuals and region likes and another country or nation live or stay. Bakit sa tingin nyo inumit yung mga words na yan? Because redundant. Okay? A lot of individuals and the people, it has the same meaning. Individuals, people, right? Country and region. Live to another, to migrate and live to another country. Migrate and live to another country, they basically have the same meaning. So, if you want to make it more precise, shorter, and direct to the point, this is the corrected paragraph. People all over the world who live in one country likes to migrate to another nation for their families. In fact, many people who live or stay in their home countries want to live elsewhere due to the benefits of living abroad. Okay. Okay. Sabi dito, kulang yung sagot. Obvious naman na kulang, di ba? Kasi ang ni-require is discuss the causes, the difficulties, and offer a solution. Pero, ang pin-provide lang na answer dito is pinaraphrase niya lang yung yung nasa instruction or nasa task and then sinabi niya lang na many people live or stay in their home countries want to live in other countries for the benefits. Hindi niya sinabi yung iba pang causes, hindi niya sinabi yung mga difficulties, and hindi rin naka-include dito sa paragraph nito yung solution. Meaning, pula. Okay? This is an incomplete answer, which means, hindi mo na uh, identify kung ano talaga yung ina-ask. Kaya ang tawag dyan, poor question analysis. Okay? Dapat lang hindi ng dalawang process dapat hindi nalawag kung natin dala explanation. Explanation like or effects. Effects functions. Ah, uh, para hindi ka kung gusto mo tigdat lo, ganun. Tapos lahat po yun. Kasi ang sabi naman causes difficulty. Meaning, ikaw mamimili kung gano'n kadami gusto mo. Pero since sinabi a solution, so ibig sabihin, isang solution lang. Okay? Isa lang yung nire-require. Um, depende na sa'yo yun. Kung gusto mo pa siyang i-prolong, i-explain pa, i-elaborate pa, just make sure na nandun ka pa rin sa scope. Okay? Kasi minsan ang tendency, kapag masyado mo lang pin-prolong yung explanation, nawawala ng relevance yung sagot mo. So just make sure to keep it short and simple direct to the point, and, of course, coherent, relevant sa tanong. Okay? So, what should you add? Causes, problems, and solutions. How? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say the causes that you put in the migrate is 
uh, lack of job opportunities in the Philippines or in your home country. Ngayon, ang effects din nun is um, effects tuloy. Difficulties pala nun is um, ang difficulties na related dun sa lack of job opportunities is um, incompetence of the educational curriculum in the Philippines. Kasi ganun yun eh. Isa sa mga reason kung bakit kailangan mo pang mag-apply ng student visa sa ibang bansa. Kasi yung level ng curriculum dito sa Philippines, masyadong mababa. Kaya kapag, di ba, pag nag-abroad ka, doktor ka, pero, doktor ka na sa Pilipinas ka, pero pag, pag punta mo na ibang bansa, nurse ka muna. Like, mag-uumpisa ka muna sa mababa. Yan o. Kasi, may, isa sa mga reasons kung bakit medyo, ina-underestimate din ng Philippines kasi sa quality din ng education. So, kung gusto mo, um, para maging uniform yung pinaka-holistic answer mo, isa sa mga causes mo, kailangan mag-reflect din dun yung problem at saka yung solution. Para mas maging, or pwede mo rin naman i-generalize yung solution, such as, di ba, ang, ang maraming causes ng pagmamigrate is, iba-iba kasi causes eh, like, relationships, um, job opportunities, family, career growth. Pero, ang sa nakikita ko kasi, ang um, pinaka point ng lahat ng problema na yon is salary. Kasi bakit nga ba nagaharap ng job opportunities abroad? For higher salary. Bakit nga ba ang family mo nasa abroad at kinuha ka? Kasi nga, ba, gusto kang makapagtrabaho for higher salary. So, bakit ka nga ba nag, <laughs> nag-asawa ng AFAM? Kasi wala kang salary sa Pinas, di ba? So, it all boils down to one problem, which is money. <laughs> di ba? So, ang solution mo, hanap ka ng solution related to that, which is money. Di ba? So, ang solution siguro, ano nga ba solution para hindi na, makapag- hindi na kailangan mag-abroad ng mga Pinoy? Marami pa <laughs> magnakaw <laughs> magnakaw na lang eh no? <laughs> easy money my suggestion ka Arton about what do you think could be the reason how Philippines how Filipinos will not migrate to other countries anymore girl <laughs> I quality education in Philippines. Mm-hmm. Magkakaroon na ng better job for those who are graduate. Mm-hmm. So, sa mga nasa Zoom, sa mga nasa Zoom, ano po yung mga suggestions nyo? Palagay ko ano eh, hindi naman porket Sinabing the grass is greener on the other side. Meaning, lahat ganun na. Kasi may mga Pilipino din namang madidiskate. Okay? And kapag marunong ka talaga sa business or business-minded ka, ano, tsaka consistent ka sa business mo, magsasaksid yan. Sometimes it takes time to reap what you sow, but you will reap what you sow. Okay, it just really requires a lot of patience and a lot of dedication. Yun nga, kailangan mo mag-invest din talaga. Yun. So, isa yun. Kaya nang mababa ko ito. Kaya nang mababa ko sa utang eh. Nandito na yung utang mo. Discarte din. Discarte din. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, at saka minsan may mga tao din naman na ano like hindi naman sweldo lang yung importante sa kanila diba? ha? <laughs> hindi, ibig sabihin ano like may mga tao din naman na mas importante sa kanila na buo yung family. Kasi isa sa causes ng sadly. Sa lahat, kasi hindi naman sa nega ako ha, pero lahat ng mga kamag-anak ko, 
na nag-abroad ending nahihiwalay. Pero hindi naman sa dinidiscourage ko kayo at saka hindi din naman sa generalize ko. Pero totoo yun ni eh. It plays a really big factor. So, that's why kung ano yung pinahalagahan mo, if you really want your relationship to work and to your marriage to work, then find better options. Kaso nga lang, magsasacrifice kapag dating di sa Philippines kasi nga, hindi nga ganun kalaki swell, di ba? Sabi nga, happiness is really found within. Pero nagigets ko naman yun sa mga may anak at kailangan nyo talagang itaguyod yung mga anak nyo. You really have to make those sacrifices. Pero bakit nga ba yun yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon? Let's go back to the lecture. Kasi stress na si Arden. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways Kaya niya yan Mag-abroad na kayo La tayong lahat Okay So The cause In fact they want to live elsewhere Due to the benefits of living abroad And there is no sign that this will stop anytime soon Okay Isa sa mga causes is they want to they they see more benefits of living abroad compared to staying in their home country isa yun sa causes now problems synonyms hardships difficulties troubles so ibig sabihin you have to also mention ano yung mga problema ng ikaharap kaharapin ng mga magma-migrate okay and then, solution, a way out. Okay, tingnan natin. Many people today who live in their home country are interested in the idea of migrating to another nation for their families. In fact, they want to live elsewhere due to the benefits of living abroad, and there is no sign that this will stop anytime soon. However, the migrants encounter difficult challenges, but there are ways to solve such predicaments. Okay. So, ayan. Tinatch na niya yung part na may mga challenges na nakaharapin. Pero, may mga solutions din naman. Na, okay. Nag-iba yung interpretation ko. So, parang sinasabi niya dito, Ano yung difficulties, tapos ano yung mga solutions sa, sa mga difficulties na yun. So, kung ang difficulty mo is homesickness, ang solution mo is you can do what? Video calls or more, spending more time talking with your loved ones or probably uh, pwede mong libangin yung sarili mo by hanging out with your friends or keeping, huh? Ano po sa church? Church, yeah. Okay, yeah. You can do that as well. You can join a ministry at church. And I feel like if you join a ministry at church, parang mas makakatulong din yun in order for you to... I know? In order for you to fight temptation. <laughs> Resist temptation. Mga ganyan. Oo. Ang ganda ng suggestion mo na yan, Lori Lynn. Okay. Okay, this is a good introduction. Mas ni-refine na ang mga kasagutan, okay? Okay. So, <clears throat> is it clear to you guys that uh, in order for you to be able to have better question analysis, you have to make sure that you know the keywords and you know what the task is requiring you to do, okay? Because then it's, it's going to be easier for you to substantiate your essay, okay? Now we will be talking about the grammar, the common grammar mistakes na nakokomit ng mga test takers. And I think na we discussed this also nung topic natin is verb tenses. And that is wrong verb forms. This is very common in speaking and in writing. 
making mistakes with grammar, okay? So one of them is wrong verb forms. So plural, singular, and then participle forms. Minsan yung tanong is, what will you do? Meaning it talks about future tense. However, um, your answer is in the past tense. So very contrary yon. So you have to be very careful with that, okay? And then it says here that plural forms, past tense or past participle forms are the common mistakes. Many people argue that young people today were not equipped with an essential skills. Ano yung mga mistakes dito? Sige, try to identify. Many people, people is what? Singular, it's considered as? Oh, plural chat. So you have to omit the S after the argue. Okay? Many people argue. Huh? Ah, okay. Many people argue that young people today were not equipped with an essential skills. Ano pa yung mali? Skills. Tanggalin natin yung S. Kasi meron na ang determiner, an, which means it's singular, an essential skill. Many people argue that young people today were not equipped with an essential skill. Or omit the an, sorry, omit the an and just essential skills. We're not equipped with essential skill. Okay? Many people argue that young people, with ang daming people, pwede kang gumamit ng ibang words, such as individuals, all right? Many people argue that young individuals today were not equipped with essential skills. Okay? So we removed the S, omitted the N, and we can also change para hindi naman same lang yung vocabs. Okay? Tense inconsistency. So, inconsistent ka sa paggamit ng tenses. In one sentence, gumamit ka ng future tense. And then sa yung isang mong helping verb or verb, ginamitan mo ng past tense. So, mali yun. So, you have to avoid tense inconsistency. Okay? It is a frequent mistake in IELTS writing. It will also affect the coherence of your writing if you confuse in the tenses. Example, in the past, people pay more to communicate to other people, such as making phone calls and sending out letters. However, due to technology, individuals can made contact more easily through the use of gadgets. Okay, try to identify the mistakes now. Grabe, sino pa ba? At uh, Ma'am Karen, naabutan niyo po ba yung sending letters through postcard? Post? Yeah. Yun yung mga panahon na aantayin mo muna ma ilang months before receiving a response. Tapos nag-aabang-abang ka lang sa mailbox. Naranasan ko mag-abang sa mailbox. Ito lang. Ito lang. Ha? May ano? <laughs> Hindi! Bills kasi yun. <laughs> Grabe ang benta naman. Wait lang. Hindi nung bata kasi ako, ganito yung ginawa sa school namin. Diba na kwento ko nga na nag-aral ako elementary abroad. So yung mga teachers namin, nakipag-collaborate sa isang British school sa UK. At uh, 
ginawan kami ng pen pals para ma-experience namin ang pen pal at para ma-experience namin yung letter writing. So, nakakilala ko ng friend. I still remember her name. Uy, ito na nga, iniisip lalaki agad. Sabi ko, her name. Her name is Gemma. And then, I remember, I, I feel like I still kept those letters. Mahilig kasi ako. I'm a very sentimental person. Sino yun? Oh. <laughs> Nag-high. Pero, I am nearsighted, so I don't recognize faces from afar. But anyway, probably a student. So, yun na nga. Um... I'm a very sentimental person. I do keep the letters that I had. And mahilig din ako gumawa ng letters before, sa totoo lang. Oh, so Pero huwag niyo akong nililibang, guys. Ano yung pali? <laughs> <laughs> Ito talaga. Ano yung sinasabi mo ngang, Karen? Yeah, postcards and greeting cards. <laughs> si Tagapagmana naman. <laughs> Nagpapagpano daw siya ng IELTS eh. Mag-i-train na doon dahil. Ay, mama, kapag sa kinaraw. Kaya nga eh. Ah, kaya ka pala nag-training dito, no? <laughs> Business-minded pala eh. Kaya pala every time na may class discussion. Okay lang kahit di magsulat ng example. <laughs> Joke lang. O, oh, ano na? Ano na yung mali? Yung? People pay more to communicate to other people so it's making money. Paid? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yes, mali din yun. Yung more to communicate. Pay more to communicate to other. Wait lang, wait lang. Yung pay, skeptical pa ako sa pay, ya. Kasi in the past, people pay more. Um, ibig sabihin kasi na neto, um, sinabi, binanggit na yan na in the past. Okay? In the past, people pay more to communicate. Ini-describe niya lang yung situation ng nakaraan, okay? They they used to pay more to communicate to other people, okay? And then ang mali dito yung can make. Dapat make. Individuals can make contact more easily through the use of gadgets. Aalisin din yung D, so use lang siya, okay? Through the use of gadgets. Basically, dalawa lang yung mali. Make and use. Okay? Verb tenses. Always consider which of the following tense you should use. Present simple. Things that are always true. General statements of facts. Dogs. Ay, dinis kasi natin to last time, di ba? Ay, pero hindi naman lahat naka-attend nung lecture na yun. Habits. I go to sleep every night. So, ito yung mga pinaka-ideal uh, situations wherein you, you're gonna be using the present simple tense. When it's a fact. You remember we discussed that? When it's a fact. When it's a general statement. If it's always true. And if it's a habit. Okay? I go to sleep every night at 11 p.m. I don't sleep anymore. <laughs> I don't sleep anymore. You na talaga. Okay. Present continuous. When an action at the moment of speaking, something in progress this week, month, or year, to talk about a future planned event. Okay. An action at the moment of speaking. For example... We are having an IELTS discussion. Having, present continuous. Present perfect, an action that took place at an indefinite time in the past, an action that was repeated before now, and an action that began in the past and continues until now. So, you have to show consistency with your verb tenses. Okay, very important that if 
You're, you chose to use the present, the present simple tense. You have to be consistent all throughout the writing, okay? The, the essay writing for that. And then we also have present perfect continuous to show the duration of something that happened in the past. Like three weeks ago pala yung discussion na yun, no? Uh oh A general activity in progress recently. Past simple, action that began in the past and finished in the past. Napaka simple lang nung past simple. Kaya nga past simple eh. Ibig lang sabihin no, yung past tense lang. Okay? And then past continuous, talk about an action that was happening in the past when another occurred. For example, I was taking a shower while listening to the news. Okay, so past continuous. An action that was in progress at a specific time in the past. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wait lang guys ah. Re-replyan ko lang to. Meron nga pa lang ano. <laughs> Pero <Yes>. ha hindi. <laughs> May presentation class yung students ko online nakalimutan ko sa kanilang i-send yung Zoom link. Oh my gosh. At magsisimula na nga pala siya. Um okay, we have Ryan 1 PM lahat. In Kimi. Wait lang, sasend ko lang ng very mabigas. So, pag wala ako dito sa IELTS, meron din kami Sunday Zoom classes. Ay, Sunday, Saturday ko lang. Oh, Okay. Okay. Some student lang pala yan. Okay. So, let's continue. Past perfect. Talk about something that was completed before another activity or another time in the past. Past perfect continuous. Talk about duration of activity that was in progress before another event in the past. And then future simple to predict or plan for the future. And daming tenses, no. It's a total of 12 tenses. So you have to be familiar with all. And please do attend the... Um, Gra grammar lecture about verb tenses, okay? Para mas ma-refresh po kayo. And if you want, you can play the replay videos of the different tenses, the different verb tenses. Okay, another common mistake is run-on sentences. It refers to joining two independent clauses with wrong punctuations and coordinating conjunctions. Here is an example of a run-on sentence. We went to the park, we bought some drinks. Ano ang kulang? Conjunction. Because there are two different statements. We went to the park, we bought some drinks. So kung hindi mo sila ihihiwalay ng punctuation mark, it's either you combine them into a compound sentence with a conjunction. Okay? We went to the park and we bought some drinks. Our two independent clauses. So, kailangan mo siyang gamitan ng conjunction na and. Or separated with a period. O di ba inulit ko lang? <laughs> Alright. So, mag madalas kasi um, kapag ka hindi ka masyadong literate or hindi ka masyadong mahusay sa writing, ang tendency, hindi ka sanay gumamit ng connecting words. At saka hindi ka sanay gumamit ng transition words, which makes it 
difficult to hindi, hindi siya maganda pakinggan, hindi din siya logical way of writing. Kaya that's why we have to make use of the conjunction words and transition words in order to make your write, essay writing more effective and logical. Using ambiguous examples in your IELTS essay. What does this mean? When including an example in your IELTS essay, you want to use something that can show your argument in action. This is best done by referring to a real life event, person, company, or place. Okay. So, pasa magbibigay daw ng examples. Kasi di ba, you are going to prove a point in your essay. Whether you agree or disagree. So, you have to give reasons. And you also have to give examples. Pero syempre, you have to make sure that the examples that you're giving are relevant to your stand. Okay, hindi ka naman pwedeng magbigay ng um, examples na hindi related dun sa topic, di ba? It has to be related and you have to make sure that you know it well. So you can give your personal experiences. Or, um, like, may naikwento sa yung friend mo na similar dun sa situation na yun, you can also give that as, as an example. Or a real life event. Why is this encouraged kasi kailangan for you to be able to express yourself more clearly at describe mo yung situation in a better way, you have to make sure na na-experience mo rin siya. You know, you're giving examples na na-experience mo at alam mo siyang i-describe mabuti. Alright? Let's read this example. So, sino pala yung mag-first sa coaching? Si Irene. And then Karen, or Ryan, Karen, kayong dalawa. Who else? Uy, ikaw never ka pa nagpa-coaching. <laughs> Hindi ka na lang pumapasok, di ka pa nagpa-coaching. <laughs> bueno, two slots na lang. Once pa lang. Ay, twice ba? Hindi, one. Last year pa kasi dalawa. <laughs> Windy. Windy. I haven't done that before. Okay. An example. GDP growth in China was has led to the improving of living standards throughout the country. Okay. For example, income growth among developing countries has the has the led to the improving of living standards in many areas. The second example's broadness makes the example seem less tangible and thus lowers its overall quality. Okay. So, income growth among developing countries has led to the improving of living standards in many areas. So, masyadong broad yung example. So, ang, ang hinihingi is a more precise and more narrowed down example. Meaning, realistic example. Okay? So, this is an example of a more realistic and more narrowed down. For example, income growth among developing countries such as China, Singapore, and even the Philippines has led to the improvement of living standards of their citizens. So, mas detail siya because it mentioned specific countries such as China, Singapore, and Philippines. Okay. Another common mistake is writing with grammatical inaccuracy. We always reiterate the fact that grammar is important. Okay? Kaya naman, um, aral kayo mabuti about grammar. And also, please attend the lectures about grammar. We have a total of nine different lectures about grammar. So, if I were you, um, please attend those and 
Aralin nyo rin yung mga handouts, okay? Ang mga common errors sa grammar ay sentence fragments, run-on sentences, yung kagaya kanina, yung walang mga connectors, improper pre preposition usage. Totoo yan. Lalo na sa speaking, mali-mali yung mga prepositions. And then verb tenses. Oo, oh, oh. lagi ko rin sinasabi. Lagi kong nanonote yan sa mga evaluation ko sa mga students. Yung verb tenses, very important. Yung prepositions. Um, minsan kasi pag madalas, if you misuse a tense or if you misuse a preposition, it holistically changes, changes the meaning of the sentence. Kaya naman, it's very important for you to focus on prepositions and verb tenses. Okay? I will no longer read the example because it's time for us to end the lecture. Okay? But don't worry because the handouts will be posted together with the replay video. Okay? So now, pag-usapan na, na May mga model answers din. Check ko nga kung nasa, kung kasali to sa handouts. Para if ever, pwede nyo siyang i-screenshot. Ay! Yung handout pala, yung pinaka-presentation eh. So, hindi nyo na kailangan i-screen out. Eh, screen out? I-screenshot. I-screen out. <laughs> okay, the handout that will be included is actually the whole presentation itself. Um, okay, so... I will say goodbye sa mga iilang natira na lang dito sa Zoom. Bye! See you next week. So, pag